They have grown in intensity. Now it's like you're gonna hold that against me. <laughs> gotcha. Hope it doesn't cut into my will or under my. Well, well you gotta watch out for those. I know. I know. <laughs> You better get it in all or you got nothing. I go, all right, Grab, I'll get down there, I'll get it in all. I'll just I write. I always wonder what happened to the kids from the marriage, you know? I'll just write down a uh, okay. something on a sheet of paper. You go, hey, look, I got it in all. Just in crayon at the top. Annulment. Hey, there, I signed it. Okay, thank you, Sherry. You want his over From down below. His power and his glory. Dark in every dark. That it can't keep growing like a rocket ship. Right. Google still makes a lot of money on search, but you know the days of them being the absolutely dominant player that prints money are kind of over, and they need a little focus if they're going to maintain. But this also lets the new company Alphabet fund a lot of projects off of the pretty substantial amounts of money that Google still makes. Yeah. Why do you suppose uh, investors after hours on this puppy were like so crazy excited? It's up, I don't know, four or five percent, something like that. Yeah. I mean, part of that could just be that they're excited to see any action during the slow summer days. But no, <laughs> I, you know, investors and I think even employees at Google had been calling for focus for a while. The company is really at risk of being distracted by all the different things that Larry Page and Sergey Brin want to do. They have big imaginations. But they've been spending a lot of Google money trying to pursue those moonshots. And so I think that investors are excited at the prospect of a more focused Google that could keep making them more money. And the possibility that Larry and Sergey unleashed might come across the next really, truly transformative big money maker. Molly Wood is our senior tech correspondent talking to us about Google Alphabet, Alpha Google, I don't know. Molly, thanks a lot. My pleasure, Ken. Sounding cliche, there is an app right now for pretty much anything you want. Buy food, done. Ride to the airport, done. Custom fit tailored shirt, also done. You need medical care sooner rather than later? Yeah, no, sorry. Dr. Renee Dua is trying to change the way we do doctor's visits with, yes, an app. For $99, they will send a doctor to your house within an hour. So I went out to her offices in Santa Monica for another story about the tech sector here in Southern California. And I asked her how she went from being an MD, she still does practice by the way, to a tech startup CEO. It's an exciting thing. I, uh, 10 years ago, I started my own private practice. And I... drive around. I mean, what was the sort of the, the forcing factor? Of that? So it really was the idea that within 60 minutes, you'll have the peace of mind that a doctor's in your house or in your office. It really was that idea. And it was born out of our experience because imagine waiting for eight hours and having no idea what's going on versus 60 minutes of a professional showing up in your home and making everything better. Uh, do you employ the doctor? Is he a freelancer? Does the person pay you and then That's you give the doctor a cut? How does all that So we, we have a little bit of both. We have doctors that work with us full time, and this is their career. It's very expensive to be a doctor in private practice, and it really, to be frank, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. Now, when doctors graduate, they don't know how to run a business, and so they sign up to work at a capitated healthcare system, Kaiser or healthcare partners or Regal. So it's very appealing to doctors to come and work with us full time because they don't have any overhead. We handle all of the expenses, we deal with billing, and their job is to see patients. And that's why they became doctors in the first place. If you think about the bigger healthcare cost picture though, what's a better use of a physician's time, right? A highly... It's going to, and they can go off book and they can break, and I, I, I'm excited for that. 
See, I was watching this show over to laugh track only. Okay. I don't want to leave a whole lot to chance. I want, you know, Bill say something. <laughs> so then I stubbed my toe and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. No laugh a track for a perfectly natural reaction, though. <laughs> See, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it has to be funny because it's, it's a laugh track. <laughs> hey, Mike. Yeah. The Alec Cox Show was recorded before a live studio audience. What's up, Mike? Uh, not too much. I was just uh, wanting to comment on that. And the, uh, have you ever seen that movie, Funny People, with uh, like Seth Rogen and uh, Adam Sandler and those guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a, a, a spectacularly unfunny movie. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. And then how about, it just reminded me of that one, uh, their one buddy that was on Yo Teach. And like, this is that Jason Silverman? I can just imagine that... Uh, his buddies are like, are you seriously on the show? Yeah, yo, teach. And again, Chris Robinson's so funny. Craig. Um, I'm sorry, Craig, Craig Robinson's so it's funny. It's Randy! <laughs> Dave Chappelle. Uh -huh, Dave Chappelle, sorry. But even Mulaney, like, is an extremely funny guy, but that show was not that funny. Oh, that show was terrible! So I hope that Mr. Robinson, I mean, again, there's a handful of lines that are really good. Um, the lead female is a hot, that Megan Good. Megan? That black girl that was on Californication a couple oh, seasons ago. Oh, her. she's a box. Stone Cold. Oh, yeah, she's cute. All right, let me break. I need to get the... All right, enough of that. Enough. Let me get to getting you... You're killing. I want to qualify somebody for the iPhone.